you are welcome to my channel this is educational world selaxi and i want to welcome you guys to physics nico practical questions 2023 i want to use this opportunity to apologize to all my subscribers out there my returning viewers and those who have not subscribed for the disappointment in making videos for the YEG 2023 physics practical questions. I want to tell you guys that I'm back. I'm back to serve you better. Stay tuned for these videos. This is the NACO physics practical cheat 2023 for question number one. Now, in this experiment, we are given the following apparatus. We have the meter rule, we have the rotor stand, we have the clamp, we have the pointer, we have the plasticine, we have the spiral spring, we have the mass hanger, we have the set of masses which are 50, 70, 90, 110 and 130 grams respectively. And we have the stopwatch on the clock. Now, we are expected to set up our apparatus as shown in the diagram, okay? Now, we have some... We can make some improvisions, okay? We can improvise. For instance, the plasticine here can be a, a chewing gum or a marshmallow. And the pointer here can be um, an optical pin. So we set up the apparatus as shown and record the length L0. L that is the length of the pointer and the spiral on attached to the spiral spring with the mass hanger when there is no mass attached to the mass hanger. So when there is no mass attached to the mass hanger, the position of the pointer on the meter rule, that is our L0. And we are going to use this, it is our reference point throughout this experiment. So add a 50 gram mass to the hanger and note the new position L. Now we are going to determine the extension. The extension is the positive difference between the final length and the original length, the initial length, that's L0. Set the 50 gram mass into small vertical oscillations and record the time T taken for 10 complete oscillations. Evaluate for the period, capital T, and the square of the period. We repeat the experiment for the masses of 70, 90, 110, and 130 grams, respectively, and determine both the extension and the period. So we we'll plot the graph of M on the vertical axis against the period, and hence the slope of the graph. Now, for us to be able to outsmart this practical, we need to understand the theories the theories behind this experiment there are certain principles that this experiment is hinged on and that is what we are going to look at now now these two principles are Hooke's law and the frequency of vibration of spring with a loaded mass now Hooke's law states that force is equal to the spring constant multiplied by the extension where k is the stiffness of the spring or the spring constant and e is the extension now the formula for the period of a vibrating spring with loaded, loaded with mass is 2 pi or square root of m which is the mass attached to the spring divided by the spring constant so you can see that the spring constant keeps occurring keeps popping up so it is very important okay now for us to be able to tackle this experiment we need to first of all perform the first value we need to perform the experiment with the 50 gram mass the 50 gram mass is the first mass that was given to us now the position of the 50 gram mass on the meter rule is 57 cm don't forget that so when we hang the 50 gram mass now we hang a 50 gram mass. Now the new length becomes 57.9 centimeter. Okay, so 57.9 centimeter is the new length. 
when the 50 gram mass has been hung on the meter rope. So to find the extension now, extension will be the the recent length, which is 57.9, sub minus the 57 centimeter, which gives us what 0.9 cm. 0.9 cm is the difference between the two lengths. Okay, so that is the extension. That is the extension. So let us solve for the stiffness or the spring constant k using Hooke's law. Remember, Hooke's law says that force is equal to ke. Okay, ke is the extension. All right. So force here is mass times acceleration. Force is mass times acceleration. And acceleration is measured in meters per second square. Okay. Now we have to convert that meters per second square to centimeters per second square. And it's pretty simple. 100 cm equals 1 meter. So 10 meter per second square will give us 1000 centimeters per second square. It's just a pretty simple conversion. Okay? So we are going to use this now to tackle our problems all right remember the only experiment we are performing is just this first one that has the 50 gram mass okay so when mass is 50 grams now to find the force force is equal to mass times acceleration so when mass is 50 grams the force will be mass times acceleration which is 50,000 gram cm per second square so we want to find the value of the spring constant, putting the values where necessary because we have our extension already. The value of our spring constant is 55555.56 gram per second square. So this, con this value is a constant and we are going to use it throughout this experiment. Now, recall that the period for uh, a vibrating mass or oscillating mass is 2 pi all the square root of m over k. Okay, now when we substitute the values where necessary, we we'll simply find that the period T is approximately, is approximately 0 0.118 seconds and the square of the period is 0 0.035 seconds square. So if time, if the time taken to complete one oscillation, which is the period, is what 0 0.188 seconds. It simply means that the time taken to complete 10 oscillations will simply be times 10, which is 1.88 seconds. So we have gotten all these values. Now the next thing we have to do is to fill in our table of values. We are going to fill in our table of values. Remember we have our K. K is constant. We are going to use it to throughout the experiment. And the value is 5555.56. For this particular experiment, you know, depending on the position of your pointer, depending on the position of your, your, your pointer on the meter rule, it can vary, but the same procedure applies. All right. So when the mass is 50 grams, the extension there is 0 0.9 centimeters. Now, the time for 10 oscillations is 1.88. The period is 0 0.188 seconds. And the period square, the square of the period is 0 0.035 second square now someone will ask me what of the t1 and the t2 that is there t1 and t2 is simply two because because we 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 are supposed to perform this experiment actually okay so we are supposed to perform it, the experiment two times and get an average of the time taken to complete 10 oscillations to avoid errors this is a precaution to have to minimize errors so since I have gotten my time for 10 oscillations, I will simply get to arbitrary close times. They are close, you know, they are, the difference is not apart, it's not much. That the average, the average of T1 and T2 will give me T. It's just, I just choose 1.86 and 2.0, okay? And make sure if you are choosing your arbitrary values that they are close enough. Not, the difference should not be too much, okay? because you become suspicious. All right, so that is that. We have filled in our table of values. So we are now going to get the values for the subsequent masses. 
you're going to perform the experiment for the subsequent masses this time using the theoretical knowledge we have already with our theoretical knowledge you're going to perform this experiment so remember our original reference point point on the meter rule L0 is 57 cm. So when 70 gram mass is hung on the on the spring balance, the length increased to was 58.2 c. Someone will ask me how did I get 58.2 c since I'm not going to you know perform the experiment any longer. Simple using Hooke's law. That same Hooke's law. We have to find the what the, the, the extension. We know that force is mg okay so and k is a constant when we do the, our substitution where necessary, we will find out that the extension is 1.2 cis. And if extension is 1.2 cis, if the spring extended by 1.2 cis, that means that the final length will be the original length plus the extension. So 57.1.2 cis will give us 58.26 centimeters. That is how I got 58.26. Okay? So for the period, I will just put the values where necessary. And period is approximately 0 0.223 seconds. And the square of the period is was 0 0.045 seconds square. So if the time taken to complete one oscillation, which is the period, is what 0 0.223 seconds, that simply means that the time taken to complete 10 oscillations will be 10 times of that, which is 2.23 seconds. So when we fill our table of values, when the mass M is 70 grams, Extension is 1.26. The time for 10 oscillations is 2.23 seconds. The period is 0 0.223 seconds. The square of the period is 0 0.45 seconds. Then T1 and T2 are two arbitrary times we chose on our own that are close together that the average gives us T. So I chose 2.26 and 2.20. And that's all. So you have to be wise in your dealings, okay? And that's all. This same procedure, you know, goes on and on and on for when the mass is 90, when the mass is 110, and when it is 130. So we are going to just see that through, okay? So that is that. So when the mass is now 90 grams, what happens? Remember our L0. L0 is our reference point. So when the mass is 90 grams, the, S, the, the length of or, or, or the position of the pointer on the meter rule becomes... 58.62 someone will ask me how did I get that remember using Hooke's law first of all I'm going to find the extension simple F is equal to KE and making E the subject of the formula we just have to find the extension and if I do the substitutions where necessary I'll find out that the value of my extension is 1.62 centimeters fine I record it down so if I do 1.62 plus 57, I'll have 58.62. That's my length, the final length. So recall that period is still 2 pi square root of m over k. If I do my substitutions where necessary, the value of the period there is 0 0.251 seconds. And the square of the period is 0 0.036 seconds square. It's as simple as that. Remember, if one period... If a period, that means the time taken for an oscillation is well, 0 0.251 seconds. That means the time taken for 10 oscillations will be well, 2.51 seconds. I'll simply input it in my table of values. So when the mass is 90 grams, the extension is 1.62 centimeters. The time for 10 oscillations, T, is 2.51. The period, T, is 0 0.251 seconds. T square, capital T square is 0 0.063 seconds square, and T1 and T2 are two arbitrary times, you know. So the same goes on to when the mass is 110 grams. I'll first of all use Hooke's law to find the extension. Once I find the extension using Hooke's law, I will now add it to the initial length or initial length or the position of the pointer, which is uh, L0. I will get the final length. So using Hooke's law, when the mass is 110 grams, okay, making my substitutions where necessary. So F is equal to Ke. I've gotten F. Now, 
if I substitute everything, I will have that the value of my extension E of the spring is approximately 2 centimeters. So if I add 2 centimeters to 57 cm, I will get that the final length or the final position of the pointer on the meter rule is 59.0 cm. Don't forget that the period of a simple, the period of a vibrating mass or oscillating mass is given by that formula there. So if I substitute where necessary, I will simply have that the period is what 0 0.28 seconds and the square of the period is 0 0.078 seconds square. So if one oscillation is 0 0.28 seconds, that means that 10 oscillations is going to give us 2.8 seconds. The same thing, we impute this in our table of values and when we impute them in our table of values, we are going to have, pretty simple, you can tell that when mass is 110 grams, extension is 2 centimeters, time for 10 oscillations is 2.8 seconds, period is 0 0.28 seconds, and the square of the period is 0 0.078 seconds square. Simply T1 and T2 are two arbitrary times I chose that the average will give me was 2.8. The same thing goes for when the mass is 130 grams. We have to find the extension. The extension will help us to find the to get the final position of the point on the meter root but due to the addition of 130 gram mass. So Remember Hooke's law says that F is equal to Ke, right? So we get F. F is equal to Mg. We already know, okay? So once we've gotten F, we we'll simply use Hooke's law to get the extension, right? So once we've gotten the extension, our, the value for our extension E here is what 2.34 centimeters. E is 2.34 centimeters. So we take note of that. Now remember the formula for for the period now if i substitute the values where necessary i'll have that the period when the mass is 130 grams is 0 0.304 seconds and the square of the period is 0 0.092 seconds square so if it takes one oscillation if it, if one oscillation takes 0 0.304 seconds to complete that means that 10 oscillations will be completed in 3.04 seconds Simple as that. So put everything in a table of values. So when mass is 130 grams, extension is 2.34 cm. Time for 10 oscillations is 3.04 seconds. Period is 0 0.304 seconds. And the square of the period is 0 0.092 seconds square. So that is that. That is pretty much this experiment. We'll go to our graph plotting soon enough. Now you can see that the table of values have, uh, each column has the labels and the units and well spelled out. And we have uniform number of decimal placements. It's very, very important for your table of values because there are marks awarded for all these little, 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 little things that many students do um, you know, overlook. It's very, very important. Okay. So going straight to graph plotting, there are certain things that you have to know concerning graph plotting. For example, the title of the graph is very, very important. The title of the graph is important. It has a mark of its own. Scale of the graph is important. It has marks of its own. The axis of the graph, the labels, the units, the corresponding units for the axis of the graph is very, very important. Don't forget that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, here, the scale here says that 2 cm to represent 0 0.5 units, sorry, 2 cm to represent 20 units on the vertical axis, okay, and 1 cm to represent 0 0.1 units on the horizontal axis. All right, so that's the scale of the graph. So, we go straight to the graph plotting, all right. Mm. Now, the slope of this graph is very, very important. There is a significance to the slope of the graph. I will explain that later. So, plotting the points when 
t square is 0 0.039 the mass is 50 and mark it out when t square is 0 0.045 the mass is 70 grams you, you, you mark out a point the same thing happens to when the square of the period is 0 0.063 there's the mass is 90 the same thing happens when the square of the period is 0 0.078 the mass there is 110 grams. And lastly, when the square of the period is 0 0.092, the mass, the corresponding mass is 130 grams. So you join these points with what we call the line of best fit, the line of best fit passing through the origin. Then we allocate a right angle triangle on the slope on, on the graph rather to determine the slope so here the slope of the graph is simply change in the vertical axis divided by change in the horizontal axis okay so like I said there's a significance to this value of this slope and that's what we're going to find out so when we substitute the values where necessary slope change in m over change in t square values are substituted based on the blue right angle triangle as you can see on the screen there okay so the value of our slope is what 1422.2 gram per second squared the unit of our slope or every slope is very very important so many students ignore this and they lose marks for that so slope is very very important don't forget to put your slope to indicate the value of your the, the, yeah the slope the unit of the slope if not it you you will lose reasonable marks okay unless the slope does not have units fine there are some, there are some yeah there are some cases where the slope does not have units and and it's understandable okay it's a dimensionless parameter in that sense so what does this what does the slope of this graph represent what is the significance of this experiment now you know from the formula the period of a of an oscillating mass of an oscillating loaded mass in a yeah so the square of the period is what 4 pi square m over k all right so remember that the slope the slope is what m over t square slope is changing m over changing t square so when we make the slope the subject of the formula in this equation one so the slope which is m over t square is equal to k over 4 pi square so k over 4 pi square here is a constant it doesn't change and the value of that constant is what our slope should provide thus with okay that is the purpose of this experiment to find the value of this constant so you can see with a good knowledge of the theory you can know the end of the experiment from the beginning there is no experiment in physics that does not have theoretical backing that means so far as the question has theoretical backing it has a way to outsmart it and that is why i'm here for you so if we substitute the values when necessary we can see that and evaluate k over 4 pi square we'll be getting a value that is close if not the same value with our slope as you can see they are very very close so that means that we are on point all right so i thank you if you have watched to this extent kudos make sure you like share and subscribe and invite your friends also to watch this video neko is around the corner thank you so much for being part of this video